Welcome to the show. This is Anissa. It's Jeremy. And I'm Gigi. And welcome to the show. And as you can see, we're taking a bit of a lead on this episode. How does it feel to be host, you guys? Oh man, from being behind the stage now as a host, it's a whole new experience for me. But right now I'm like nervous, but mostly excited. Yeah, I'm pretty pumped right now. Like I've never been a host before. And I'm just excited to see what I can do with this is. I know, I think I heard some background noise in there. Was that our co-host making noise? GD, oh. Rachel? Come on out, guys. Come on out. Hey. And how are you both doing oh. today? Oh, careful there. <laughs> you okay? You're so excited and you almost trip yourself. Uh-huh. You are? You should have run in your house, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You doing good other than that, Rachel? Uh-huh. And how about you, JD? Are you doing good? Mm-hmm. All right, so with that being said, how about we get started right into the show? All right. Now, it's March, but last month was Black History Month, February, but obviously it's important to keep that kind of information up year-round. Mm -hmm. Jadine, how about we start with you? What does Black History mean to you? Um, it's to remember what the people in the past did, the black people, because they went through a lot. And Gigi, especially, I think your commentary is one of the most important out of us. What does Black History mean to you? Um, I feel like it's a, just an acknowledgement of everything that we've, um, this, our race has been through and, you know, just what they've done and what our origins and all that. So, yeah. Rachel, do you have any commentary on black history? What's that? <laughs> black history is acknowledging, is acknowledging what black people have done throughout, throughout the years because it hasn't always been acknowledged right. Oh. <laughs> and Jeremy, do you have any commentary on that? Um, based on what everyone says, I agree with what they said, but in my opinion, I think black history is a way for um, the Africans back in the day where they were slaves and now because of Martin Luther King, mm. MLK Jr., because of his speech 50 years after that, they were able to be recognized and be given their freedom and I think that's a really great and amazing thing. Mm -hmm. And I agree as well, and we can always acknowledge that we can always do more. And we, we can't always limit it to just one month. We can, lim we can show it year round. So we have some footage from a unity assembly that was held a, couple, a little while back in February that featured a lot of black and lummy artists. So let's go check it out. Let's give our performers today a unified welcome on the count of three. One, two, three. The African-American story began in Africa. Africa is the world's second largest continent. It covers 6% of the Earth's total surface area and 20.4% of the total land area. Africa is widely accepted as the place of origin of humans and the great deeps, as evidenced by the discovery of the earliest hominids and their ancestors that have been dated to around seven million years ago. Freedom is coming! Freedom is coming! Freedom is coming! Oh yes, I know! 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 Seminole members of the governing council. 
There were numerous amounts of African Indians included in this massive move. dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be laid low. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. And when this happens and when we allow freedom reign when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day. The junction, put out the day into view. From the bottom lifted, but my hand was made strong by the hand of the Almighty. We fought it this generation triumphantly. Won't you help me sing this song of freedom? Cause all I ever had, redemption song, redemption song, redemption song, redemption song. Redemption song. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Why yourself can't get free your mind? And then Lewis Lattimore invented the light bulb. Hey, look at it. And Henry Sampson invented the cell phone.
That was amazing. Yeah, what a great performance. Wow, I have no words for that. And that was a wonderful assembly celebrating diversity, featuring a lot of great artists, including two young ladies who just happened to show up on our stage, mm -hmm. the Riveras, Pauline, oh, no, Leslie. Guys. <laughs> so glad you could join us. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you two doing? We're doing We're good. Doing good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we just saw you guys perform at the Black History Unity yeah. Assembly, celebrating diversity. What was that like for you guys? Um, it was kind of an unusual day for us because we're not really, we don't usually perform on weekdays or during school hours yeah. like that. So it was kind of weird and it took like a long time to get there because it was pretty far. But it eventually worked out and I had fun. Yeah, and nonetheless, like we were there for one purpose only and that was to um, tell the youth and explain to them that there could be unity not just among um, the black um people, but also among like all the races, Filipino, um, uh, Mexican, uh, Indian, and every race. Yeah. Celebrating yeah. diversity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the performance in itself like for you guys? Um, for me personally, I really enjoyed it because, um, I don't know, it was kind of, it was a really good vibe because all the little kids there, they had a big smile on their face and I, I hope that they enjoyed our performance. I could tell that they had fun. I, I hope. <laughs> and um, they were clapping their hands. They had they were like jumping up and down. Yeah. I don't know. I, I had a fun time. Yeah, and as for me, um, we sang uh, Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror. Yeah. Um, so um, the youth, they, they know Michael Jackson. Like he's well known among the youth. So um, yeah, I, I feel like they did have a good time, bless you. <laughs> yeah. As they were clapping their hands and uh, jumping up and down. And yeah, and we just like to thank them for having us there. So. And thank you for joining us both. Yeah. Thank I'm glad you guys can make it. Yeah. Now we had, and we had a lot of artists there, including your friends on Listed Reality. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, I think we have another clip of Unlisted Reality. Yeah, we do. So next up, we have the Unlisted Reality and also Mighty, who's mm. an art indie artist. And they did a performance later that evening. Now let's go welcome them in. Here's Mighty and the Unlisted Reality. It ain't no do that do they eat cabbage do you eat cabbage well sometimes sometimes you I eat, your vegetables. eat your vegetables dragon <laughs> <laughs> so have you went to any celebrations of the Chinese New Year I saw I saw the dragon thing where they eat cabbage and yeah did you yep I went to check out the Chinese New Year period I caught it on camera want to see sure can I yep yes
back in the beginning of the show when we had dancers to start it off? Yeah, I think you were one of the dancers, right? Yeah. I would really like to see some more dancing. What about you? Yeah, and you know what? I think we actually have a bit of start of that. Jeremy and I. Jeremy? Jeremy, where'd you go? Jeremy? We got a show to do here. Why aren't you on set? What up, everybody? I was just busy chilling in the corner, just doing my own thing. So what's up, guys? Well, while you were doing your own thing, we were talking about dancing. Oh, oh, dancing, that's cool, because I was just dancing there like a few seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> so we should bring dancing back onto the show, right? Yeah, we should. Oh, speaking of dancing, we got to see a whole group of dancers just this morning, and we got to film them. It was amazing. It was at the Scotia Dance Theater, mm -hmm. and we got to see Gabby and Julian, who did an amazing job performing there. Yeah, it was the Gabby Mir workshop, and she came all the way from Berlin to showcase how she trains up-and-coming choreographers. And we got some clips of the interpretive dancing, as well as interviews with Gabby herself, as well as one of the choreographers. So let's roll into that now. So why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, I'm uh, coming from Berlin, Germany, and I got invited by the uh, Dance Victoria people, Stephen White and his gang. And um, they actually we planned the project in 2011 already. So I work at home in Berlin with emerging choreographers and he asked me to do this here. Then he got in touch with the dance center people and so they made this little corporation here, brought me over, by uh, supported by the Canada Council for the Arts. I'm a Vancouver-based dance choreographer, so I make different performance works. Sometimes they're shown in art galleries, sometimes like today they're shown in, in more traditional theater settings. My work often kind of blurs the lines between dance and art, collaborating a lot with other people, like visual artists making sculptures or sound designers making different kind of audio works. Uh, today's event is, um, let's say, the showing, the final showing of the workshop process. Mm -hmm. I taught two workshops, one in Victoria, two weeks, mm -hmm. and one here for two weeks. And what came out of the workshop is sort of a piece. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a work in progress mm -hmm. and all the four pieces are shown. Well the Dance Center has been um, an organization I've been involved with for many years. And they have a lot of programs to help with the development of young choreographers. I've had opportunities like this 
to research work or be mentored by more established artists such as Gabby. Were there any challenges you saw over these past couple weeks? Uh, still the language. To communicate about art mm -hmm. is difficult in your own language mm -hmm. and it's, it's even more and more, more difficult in another language mm -hmm. to find these little grey mm -hmm. tones in between black and white and mm -hmm. yes and no, you know. How do you choreograph a dance? <laughs> yeah, what I a know, question. It's like a question I've always wanted to know. <laughs> well, there are lots of different ways of going about it. I was choreographing the piece from the outside. Uh -huh. So uh, directing them mostly verbally, we started with uh, these sort of games <laughs> that we would play to create movement out of. So one of the simple games that we started with was uh, an exercise to explore partnering where they had to use each other's bodies in different ways to try not to touch the floor. What I liked in this was the process of coming together. I mean, 2011, we got in touch for the first time. So working over four years on this, how to bring me over, <laughs> was sort of fun. It's, uh, it's just, it's, sometimes it takes some time, but then it's even better, because you know what to work on and you can create while you're writing for them back the, the issues that are important for the process. Tell me, what inspired you to dance? Huh, another hard question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I think like a lot of little kids, I, I just felt compelled to run around and move and uh, be dramatic. <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, so my parents putting me in, in ballet class and then I just always knew it was something that I wanted to use to c express myself. So maybe some potential young dancers out there getting ready to be inspired. Do you have any last words for them? Come to Dance Center. <laughs> <laughs> Quite easy to find. There's a really huge offer of classes, education, really also on a low level, so you can join whenever. Check out the Dance Center. Check out performances that are going on in the city. Don't be afraid to express yourself through movement, even if it's uh, not within the bounds of a traditional dance setting or in a specific discipline of dance. Uh, it's worth it, it's fun, there's every evening something going on, so I enjoyed it just to drop in and to get to know um, to the people here. So it's quite easy, there's no threshold, so don't be shy. Well, we're starting to run out of time. Did you guys have fun hosting? Yeah, I think I could pull this hosting thing off. It's pretty cool. Oh, I just had an excellent time from being behind the scenes, now in front of the scenes. I definitely relate with you, Jeremy. Usually I'm behind the camera, but now I'm in front of the camera. And now that we're here hosting, I think we should bring up our hosts that came in late. Huh. We're Pauline, Blessie. Hello. Hello. You saw them. Hey. You saw them earlier? <laughs> And now they're here again. Yeah, Why are you guys late? Sorry, you guys missed the opening. Sorry about that. Sorry. We actually didn't mean to be late, but we've been busy running around, doing some other stuff, doing some secret projects. But um, yeah, that's stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We we'd like to thank you guys for stepping in. I know oh, wow. it, it was a total surprise, but we appreciate it. And yeah, yeah definitely, you guys could um join us in hosting oh, anytime. Mm -hmm. Host number three right here. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. audience behind the TV, how do you think they did? We did good. We did good. good. Oh, I think they did good. From what I saw, yeah. Yeah, oh. uh, yeah. tweet us on uh, uh, Twitter and yeah. Yeah, on Facebook, comments on our um, Facebook group and tell us how they did. And tell Hashtag us on Team YouTube. Gigi. <laughs> <laughs> and tell us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Everything at Club Fuji. With that being said, how about we get around to closing the show? Yeah. Okay. First of all, let's thank everyone who came on the show, who provided right. us clips and performed. And I think we're missing oh. someone, right? Yeah, I think Wait, we're, we're missing Rachel oh. JD. We're missing our co-host. Co-host. Oh, Come on, guys. Our co -host. Come on out, guys. Go. <laughs> That's hosting 101. Don't forget oh, to. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to. Gotta put those in the There notes. you are. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do that one? <laughs> yep. Yeah. What's your Chinese oh. zodiac?
<laughs> I like bananas. Oh, <laughs> me too. <laughs> Don't take my bananas. <laughs> Don't worry, your bananas are yours. Jadine, did you have a good time? Yeah. What was your favorite part? Um, watching the Chinese New Year parade. That's mm-hmm. pretty cool, yeah. All right, so don't forget, as we mentioned before, we're on social media, but don't forget to check out our website too at clubfuji.tv, where you can check out our past episodes as well as some exclusive stuff that you can't see on TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, and remember, don't forget to be fun, fun unique, creative individuals. Bye. Bye. See you guys next time.